Okay, well, we just got back from seeing The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Quite an experience. It actually takes a lot to get me into the theater, but I'm a huge sucker for Lord of the Rings, and so, of course, I was there. I should start by saying the word of mouth I've gotten from this one has not been good. Right? You? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, and you... You especially were dubious about hearing they'd split the one book into three movies. Exactly. You took this as an omen of dread. I Granted, I haven't read the book since high school, so I'm going to be terrible at what was faithful to the book and what was not, because I can barely remember much of any of it. But I think, I think that's how almost every review ever written or done about this movie is going to start. They're going to be like, I haven't read this book since elementary school, so I don't remember what happens. But I still don't remember it. It's still a tiny book compared to everything oh, else. Oh, it's not a book. tiny book. It's not It's not a tiny book. Um, but yeah, again, I haven't read it since junior high. I do remember probably more than, than most critics do. It was pretty close. Um, as I recall, The Escape from the Elves was a lot different, but, uh, it's, it's pretty close. Now, what's, what's interesting was that, uh, I didn't know how they were going to do it because The Hobbit is a tonally much different book than the rest of The Lord of the Rings because it was kind of written in a bubble where Tolkien just wanted to write this, a children's story. You know, about, you know, dragons and dwarves and stuff like that, and it's, it's very clear from chapter one that it's, that it's a child story, you know, it's it, it's a long one, it's a complex one, but it's one for kids, like junior high kids and younger can read it or have it read to them. And so that's that's what the book feels like, and so um, this is, it's not jumping ahead, but it's, it's kind of confronting an issue I didn't really want to get to, but uh, uh, the tone is a very interesting part of this movie, because it has those elements, it starts right off with them, because the first part is, the first act is essentially... A comedy, you know, where Gandalf brings over these all these dwarves and they essentially just throw this impromptu party and they trash his house and they eat all his food and stuff like that. And so there's there's two issues: is one, is it funny? And two, uh, how do they resolve the fact that there's kind of a tonal clash with the lighthearted comedy up front and then it it gets dark, you know, it gets to a lot of a lot of battles and a lot of fighting and stuff like that, which I thought was done well. Uh, again, um, most of the criticisms I've said is totally it's all over the place, it's confusing, and I didn't find that. I found that it starts off very light and it becomes adventurous. You know, it's I wouldn't say dark, but it definitely becomes an adventure, which... Yeah, there's, there's more... There's more action, and I, it gets more there violent. There is. Uh, you know, there's decapitations and, and monsters getting cut, but a lot of the times the, the action fits the more lighthearted pace, yeah. where there's a, one of the big action set pieces at the end is when they all are escaping the, the goblins, and it's, it's, almost like a, it's almost like a cartoon, like a, mm. like a, like a little bit... Obviously, a more violent cartoon, but you know they're they're pushing all these goblins away using ladders, and boulders are falling down. And it, it, I, I'm not saying it's it's funny or no. anything like that, but it, it's it's very much, it's kind of like a swashbuckling yeah. type yeah. Uh, adventure where you don't you don't take it seriously. Yeah, people are getting chopped down, but you don't, you're not thinking of the ramifications of that's, people dying, that sort of thing. That's a better point. I wouldn't say it's cartoony, but it's definitely more swashbuckly, where you're, you're watching these heroes do heroic things and doing really cool stuff to these enemies and stuff like that. And there is kind of a clash when it comes to, for instance, the very next scene, where the, the albino orc dude... Uh, the Prometheus alien? The Prometheus alien... Uh, wants to sh show down with Thor and Oakenshield, and then that's really intense. You know, like, that was a really great scene, I thought, by the way, but I'll get to that. But yeah, you had this scene where, like, all of a sudden, this shit got real. And I, I, I can see why critics would have a problem with that, because you're like, oh, we're having fun, we're having fun, oh, shit. You know, it, it, it turns... But even then, it, it's, it's serious, but it's not 
it's not like the Lord of the Rings where characters die. Yeah. It, it, nothing, nothing that tragic happens or that, that dark or grim. Things, things get more serious, but it, it's all in the adventurous spirit of yeah, things. Yeah, and I, I think that's the difference between The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings series, is that, and I, I think the movie carries that, is it's a very adventurous type of movie. Violent, certainly, but it's still a fable, you know, it's still that kind of, the people die, in a, you know, monsters die in a fable and stuff like that, and a lot of that stuff, there's, there's no way to make several of the scenes in The Hobbit intense, like the troll scene where they get turned to stone by the daylight. It's it's very fableish, you know, and it's there's there's no way you're going to like make that into the the dark knight style realism where they're like you know, he he's he's trying to convince the trolls that how to prepare the dwarves for so they're tasty and it's not silly, but it's it's uh it's a little more childish, you know. It's and it's it's fun that way. A kid is going to love that. And I liked it. Um I guess now we should back up and say what our general impressions of the movie were. I don't think you liked it nearly as much as I did. I thought it was great. I said my line was, it's too long. It's, <laughs> and that's that's <laughs> the crux of it, is that the negative word of mouth has been consistent, and it's for one main reason, it's too goddamn long. Pretty much on those words, it's too goddamn long. You were watching the the extended editions earlier yeah. in the week of Lord of the Rings, yeah. and and we had a discussion about which we preferred, and I said the the theatrical because, and I appreciate the extended editions. I love the the deleted scenes, and I love seeing them every once in a while to get this extra extra goodies, extra perspective on different things. But mm -hmm. in terms of a, a theatrical, of a movie going experience mm -hmm. and getting all the highs and lows and, and being drawn into an experience. I felt the theatrical moved along at a lot quicker pace and when it came to The Hobbit it felt like I was watching the extended editions where there were several scenes in which I'm going yeah, this is nice it's it's pleasant to watch but you is can this see, scene necessary? Yeah, if you, were, if you were directing this or editing this you're like, <laughs> could I cut this? Right? Yeah. Yeah, and um I can see that. I really can. Here's the difference, though. I'm willing to let... I am not the guy to review this movie. I'm not. Because I love this shit. I love all of this shit. Like, The Lord of the Rings. I want as much of that as you can give me. I love those movies. If they're one of the few movies I'll watch over and over and over again and really not get tired of it. The only extended edition I thought was weaker because of it is The Two Towers. The Two Towers is too goddamn long. The extended cut, I don't even bother with it, because there's all sorts of shit that, you know, there's, there's scenes of, like, Eowyn going to a funeral and singing, and then, like, this contributes nothing. You know, a lot more fucking around with the Ents. When the Ents were, like, by nature, like, the most boring fucking part of the movie. I'm like, we don't need more of this. We don't need more boring shit. Um... And I even thought I was going to go into this movie and hate it. Like, I was like, you know, even though I, I don't see three movies in this. Actually, I was sticking up for it. I was like, you know, there, is, there are three distinct, distinct parts of The Hobbit. Like, the beginning, the beginning, middle, and end. No, there's, there's the beginning where they're, they're, they have these adventures with the trolls and they meet the goblins and stuff like that. You know, there's a definite first act there. The second act is when they encounter the dragon. Then the third act is when they're spoilers, that when they have secured the horde, and they have to do all, there's a fallout to that, you know, there's there's defending it and stuff like that. So there's, I saw potentially three movies in this. Um, I didn't know how they were going to pull it off. So, my impressions, I've completely gone into intent, my impressions in the theater were that the audience, which was very small, seemed to hate it. Did you get that impression? Uh, I I also think they were getting a little restless. Yeah, you. It is so hard, I think, to keep an audience. And it's, this isn't an insult to like people are stupid these days, but it takes a lot to put somebody's ass in a seat for three hours, three plus hours, right? How, how long was this? I I think it was just it was around three, three yeah. around three. So it takes a lot to put an ass in a seat for three hours. And so you were really gonna you're gonna try people's patience for yeah. that long. There were set pieces that, 
you could tell that there were different set pieces all through the part, the, the, the movie, mm-hmm. which aligned with the book, and which kept things fresh, and they kept things going. You had the, the dwarf party at Bilbo's, which was fun. You had them go, you met the, the cave trolls, which was another scene, uh, kept it going, and then you had the, the riddle scene mm-hmm. involving uh, Gollum, and then you had the, the escape from the caves, that sort of thing. But then, then there are stretches where it's like, and again, this would be nice in extended edition, but they go to Rivendell, and then they just sit around, and they talk, and they talk about this is how you get to the mountain, and this is how you open it, when it could have been explained in an expository scene of, one expository scene of dialogue, instead of them just chilling out. Yeah, it, it's it's nice to see, but then again, it's the, yeah. it's it pulls a drag shoot in between these different set pieces in which you're going. I know the scene you're talking about, where they're sitting around the table and they're they're talking like um, they're talking about why you're going to the mountain, and then Gandalf is like, "Oh, by the way, I found this," and he puts the the Morgul knife up there, and then they have this discussion and like that was buried with the Witch King of Angmar, and Gandalf's like, "I know, right." And then Elrond's like, what the fuck is this? And Galadriel's like, that's the Witch King of Angmar's knife. And like Elrond's like, that's impossible. He was fucking buried. And we put magic spells on it and shit. And Gandalf's like, I know, right? And then like Galadriel's like, what the fuck is this shit? And Elrond's like, I know, right? And but so, it doesn't add anything. No. And then, and then, but they're like, well, Gandalf's like, we need to look into this shit. And so Elrond's like, well, this could come from anywhere. And then Saruman's like, yeah, we, we don't know shit. And it's, supposed, it's supposed to be a tie into the Lord of the Rings yeah. and going... You know, Gandalf's we, going, there's a darkness coming, yeah. there's there's something happening, and ooh, there's portents, you know, there's there's all this yeah. stuff, yeah. But, so, but in the terms of this movie, it yeah. doesn't add anything. No, it doesn't, and I can see that, however, I, I, again, huge mark, so I'm like, oh, so this is, like, it's foreboding, like, we see the Witch King, of, like, we explain where the Witch King comes from, and stuff like that, you know, he comes from this tomb, and... We buried him because he was such a bad motherfucker, and now he's back. And they're like, what did this? And they're like, I don't know, could it be the Dark Lord who... <laughs> and they're like, no, it couldn't be the Dark Lord who did all this shit. <laughs> and, you know, it's good, but I... Again, huge mark. And so, even I was watching this scene going like, I could have cut this. You know what I mean? There's there's a few scenes like that where they could have just strictly gone to Rivendell, given Elrond the map... And El, you know, Elrond is like, hmm, you have to go to this shit and open this thing. And they're like, good, thanks, and gone, you know. <laughs> yeah, you could have just said, yes, I read, I read Dwarvish. Yeah. This is what it said instead. No, we have to go when the moon is in its peak in the, in the yeah. crescent, and we have to put it on the Kal-El <laughs> crystal. <laughs> We're doing it. Five minute sequence. <laughs> I didn't think it was funny how none of the dwarves read ancient Dwarven. Uh, or know anything about those moon letters that are written there, and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and Elrond's like, yeah, yeah, this shit was written by a special magic pen that y- you can only read it at the same time the moon is when it was written. <laughs> and the dwarves are like, oh. And I'm like, dude, this is your thing. Like, you're like, what, fuck, you can't read Dwarven? And they're like, no, it's old Dwarven. What, can you read, like, old fucking Elvish? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> And they're like, dwarves not read. <laughs> dwarves dig for shinies. <laughs> yeah, so that that's the thing is I can easily, sir, I, in a way I agree. It's like, I... Uh, Again, it, it, if you wanted to release an extended edition yeah. Hobbit, the, un, the, yeah. the, 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 the journey continues, that sort of thing, and make it three hours... I'd have no problem with that. Yeah. These scenes would be great. I'd love seeing uh, Elrond and and Saruman and and all these well, things. But it, it, I was the second act really. I was just dragging well, down. And the shit with Radagast, where yeah, where that whole thing could like okay, Radagast has this deal with the spiders, and I I had to leave to go to the bathroom because <laughs> it's three hours. Come on, give me a break. Um, but Radagast is like, there's these spider fucking things. Did they ever deal with that? Did they deal with that in like the two minutes I was gone? No. That, the, how did they deal with that? But really what it boiled down to was Radagast says, I was looking into the, the evil that's in my forest. And I found this. And I found Nazgul, basically. There's, yeah. a, there's a necromancer out there. And, oh, the necromancer, okay. And, and he dropped this, and he has the, the sword. 
and he basically uh, played distraction mm-hmm. for the the orcs that were chasing him while mm-hmm. while the rest of the party ran off into the valley. That's another thing. I don't remember Radagast being in The Hobbit. I'm sure I'll be corrected, but I don't remember hearing that. I know Radagast is in The Fellowship of the Ring. Although, that was a funny line. I always thought that was funny. Um, was, uh, I think it's Bilbo, or one of the dwarves, that's like, oh, so is there anyone else like you? Any wizards? And he's like, yes, there's five of us. And they're like, really? Who are they? Are they any good? Like, <laughs> He's like, well, there's, uh, there's Radagast, and he's kind of a druid-type guy. He's high most of the time. And then there's Saruman, who's, who's fucking badass. And then there's two blue assholes. I don't remember their names, which I always thought was funny. Was I even asked this? I was like, uh, in fact, I probably talked about this in Encounter Monkey. I was like, is there seven or there five? I know there's two blue ones. And that's, it's almost literally what Gandalf says. He's like, and then there's two blue losers. I, fuck, I don't, I met him at a party one time, and we were really drunk, and then they were gone. I don't know. And that's the funny thing, is even in the Lord of the Rings, they never, they, you know there's two blue guys, and they live, like, way the fuck, they're, they're like, they're not in this story. Fuck, they're not Cimmerillion, but I didn't even read that. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh, it, was, it was boring even for me, and I'm, like, a thousand years old, and, yeah, they, but they don't even have their names, like, the, Tolkien never included their names, they're just two blue assholes they're just blue. <laughs> and so I thought that was really funny, because, like, even Gandalf's like, I, what the fuck I know. Yeah, so, um, I, even I will admit, for somebody who is not a complete and total mark for these movies, I'm, I was actually kind of, I was even, even I was mentally ticking off scenes, like, when Gandalf goes like, oh, so then there's Radnagas the Brown, and they start to pan away, and I'm like, you're not. Oh we, my god, they are. And then we, like, pan down to Radagast, who's like... We have a five-minute scene of Radagast just wandering around the woods. Like and petting then, a porcupine. And then, it, and then it ends. Or a hedgehog, I'm sorry. You just imagine Gandalf token up going, I'm sorry, what was I talking about? And then he shoved a jewel down a hedgehog's throat, and, and I'm like... Uh, but I'm sitting there going, like... Wow, we're actually going to spend five minutes with Radagast, who's, like, got, like, half his head coated in bird shit, really? Yeah, and he's like, he's got, he's like, he is good. He's got like birds and shit in his hair. He's so <laughs> fucked up. And even Saruman, I love how Saruman is like, oh my, Radagast, he's not here, is he? Is it they're like, what's wrong with Radagast? The dude eats shrooms, like, all the fucking time. And I was like, oh, he's a fun guy. There are severe drug problems There's, in this wizard school. <laughs> where, where do you think I get my pipe weed, Saruman? It was... Those blue wizards are train spotting big time. Yeah. Hey, look, he's a. He'll hook a brother up. He sells cheap. You want a dime bag, Saruman? And she's like, yes, I would. No, I would not. No. So, yeah, even. I, it, that was funny where it's like, I'm loving this movie, but even I am going, like, you know, if I wasn't a huge fan, this would suck. <laughs> But I'm sitting there going, like, yeah, Radagast, I remember that motherfucker. They cut him out of Lord of the Rings entirely. <laughs> yeah! And I'm like, but Miles is like, <laughs> what the fuck is with this guy? And you're like, are we ever going to see this guy again? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the thing is, we, like I said, we have that scene where Radagast, he's wandering around the forest and there's these sick animals that he's tending to. He's like doing CPR to a hedgehog. <laughs> he's doing a CPR to a hedgehog. And then it cuts away. And it cuts back to the party and I turn to you and I go like... What the fuck was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Did, did Gandalf have fucking Alzheimer's? Yeah, like, Gandalf yeah. was like... And then he went to the castle and died at the end. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? Is he I coming back? You know, I, I can't even remember the ending. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fire, you fools! <laughs> yeah, Gandalf is... You kind of like, does he just trail off? And I'm like, yeah, I get it. He's got the Abraham Simpson problem of story. <laughs> which, which was the style at the time. Don't you puke in my lap. You better not. I will say, uh, another... I won't say a problem, but I'll say the, uh, something that was weaker in this movie than one the Lord of the Rings was... I feel that the Lord of the Rings had a much stronger uh, cast of characters. You had a much more diverse cast where you had... A lot of people had 
so many different favorite characters, whether yeah. it be Aragorn, Gandalf, Gimli, Legolas, that sort of thing. Whereas in this one, it's Bilbo, it's Gandalf, and, and then 13 dwarves. 13 dwarves that are all interchangeable. I, I don't know if you can fault the movie for that. Because by its very nature, Lord of the Rings is very clear. Because there's like... And this is actually the way a lot of D&D parties fall victim. Is you don't remember Legolas, you remember the elf. You don't remember Gimli, you remember the dwarf. You know, that's... You remember greasy-haired long... You, know, you remember... You don't remember Aragorn, you remember greasy long-haired fucker with the sword. You know, and so... Uh, more distinctive personalities. They were more distinctive, yes. But movies. That's even, in, that's even the case in the book. Where there's like... There's Thor and Oakenshield, and then there's a shitload of other dwarves. You know, there's... That's pretty much it. And in this movie... Actually, actually, I think the movie probably does more to establish the dwarves than the book does. Where there's... there's Oh, and I think it will over the course of nine yeah. hours of <laughs> there's There's like three main dwarves I think we follow. Like, there's there's Thor and Oakenshield, who by nature is the leader. You know, he's he's that guy. There's the guy with... I, I don't even remember his name. Uh, Thor and I... The, like, fuck, I don't know. The guy with the white beard, who's like the guy who talks to Thor and all the time, and he's kind of the guy who knows things. And then there's the guy who talks to Bilbo with the, you know, the, the stupid hat, the, the, the deerstalker hat type thing. So there's like three or four, and they their names are almost insignificant. They all have a unique look. Like, you remember the way they look. There's the big fat fucker. There's the guy with, you know, the, the bald guy with the tattoos on his head. You know, the guy with the slingshot, that dumbass. But they, Gandalf tried naming him three times, and all those uh, times Owen he's and like... Owen and Durin and Sleepy and like Wacky. Sleepy and Dopey and Donner and Blitzen. <laughs> and Wacky and Doc. <laughs> he could have called him anything, and I would have been like... All right. Sneezy! <laughs> Be like Sneezy, go I'm, stoke the fire. Okay, I'm this. Balin. <laughs> oh fuck, I don't care. What the fuck ever? Ta weird tattoo head guy. Go ahead, Bob. <laughs> that that is an issue with the story, but that uh, that's not an issue with the movie. That's an issue with the story, a valid one nonetheless. But that, I think that's really just the way it goes in the book. Is this is like, it's really just Bilbo's story. No, it's Bilbo and Gandalf and pretty much Thorne, and that's about it. I'm sure I'm going to get corrected on that, too. They're like, no, dude, Owen is one of the main... Owen and Glowen are like the linchpins of the movie. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, that, I, I actually think those guys have more of a personality in the movie than anything. Like, the dumbass with the slingshot, he's kind of the immature one who's an idiot. And the fat fucker is the guy who eats a lot. <laughs> he's fat. Yeah, and he likes food. That's about it. No, but um, there's there's um, oh, the guy. Fuck it, um, th there's a guy with like two axes and shit like that. Although I always found it that's that dumbass with the slingshot. I always saw that guy go like, dude, dude, <laughs> it's like a slingshot. Somebody hand this fucker an axe, like. Even the Hobbit has better hardware than you. I'm like, dude, that the the what? Yeah, the one guy, the 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 two guys who follow uh, Bilbo to the trolls and stuff like that. I remember them. I know what you know. The, they're these kind of buddies, you know. That oh, actually, it might have been Owen and Glowen. Uh, no, uh, oh, uh, Keely and Feely. Those guys I remember because like that one guy has a bow and he's kind of a he's kind of a. Uh, cynical kind of funny guy, you know, he's, you know, those two are the, they hang out together, they're the bros, you know, so, so yeah, so I, like, I probably paid a little more attention to that, but, so, and even I don't know, that fuck it, I don't know, but I, you can recognize them on sight, and so some of them have very distinct personalities, so there's like three, which is fair enough, um, you're really just meant to pay attention to fucking Thor and Bilbo, though, you know, so that's about it, but, um, I think that's what it comes down to, is how much of a mark you are for Lord of the Rings. If you're a big fan, you will love this movie. If not, if, like, you've never seen Lord of the Rings in your fucking life, you don't know anything about the story, this is going to bore the shit out of you. You're, gonna, you're not going to know why they're including shit, like, the Morgul Knife. You're never going to see that fucking thing again in the rest, in any of the movies. I think it'll still be... Good. I mean, it's still a decent adventure. But it's movie, gonna lose. But it's it's it, it's too long for the general audience. 
it, they, I, and I can actually see, they, they try to pad it out a little bit with action beats to get you interested because, and I don't know if it works that way, because it, let's, say, let's say you're coming into this blind, you didn't know shit. The first hour of this will lose you. I guarantee you, if you don't know shit and you're not a fan and you're just walking into this movie blind, the first hour, you're going to be lost. You're going to be done. You're going to be like, can we just please fucking leave the Shire and find a dragon and shit like that? And by the end of the movie, you're like, they don't find the fucking dragon. And Look like, at how far that mountain is. Yeah, yeah like, we got to walk all the way that fucking mountain. And they're like, that's 300 miles. And they're like, I know, right? It's going to be like a whole other movie. It's going to take us like two movies to get there. <laughs> Third movie, we'll get to the fucking mountain. We got a shitload of more walking to do. God damn it. There's, there's giant fucking eagles, man. <laughs> can't, the, can't the fucking eagles drop us off a little closer? No. We are walking this bitch. The <laughs> eagles are fucking busy, okay? <laughs> that needs to be a deleted scene. <laughs> they just go like, well, what, what are they flying off for? <laughs> How do we get down for this fucking rock? How do we get down? Fuck you, eagles! They wait, wait, oh shit, they're coming back. They're gonna eat us. Oh shit, <laughs> they didn't save us at all. <laughs> or, the, or a little stinger after the credits. Hello. <laughs> The eagles land them on top of this rock, and it's very picturesque, and they're going like, well, it looks like the worst of this journey is behind us, and it goes, do 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 And you just want this thing at the end going like, actually, I... I how the you, fuck do we get down? You mentioned <laughs> that, you whispered to me in the theater, and I looked, there actually are, like, stairs. There are. There's, or if not stairs, there's a way to climb down, but I saw them. I'm like... Okay, there is a way down, but that would have been funny. We're like, they, it's like, do you have a rope? No, do you have a rope? Shit. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Hello, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta call the eagles back. <laughs> I honestly thought we were gonna see Radagast up on a hill being like, Asalaamu Alaikum. <laughs> the wizards gotta stick together. Yeah, except for Sarah, man. Fuck that guy. But yeah, um... Yeah, the the scene with the, that's where it's gonna lose you is Rivendell. Yeah, you I mean you picked it out, and that's what stuck in your mind. You're like you're sitting there going like, can we just please fight some fucking goblins now? And I'm like, no, we gotta talk about the Witch King. We like, gotta Fuck. talk more. And you're like, well, you're like, is this does that have any, does this have anything to do with anything? And you're like, no, but three movies from now, you're gonna it'll it, totally pay off. It's gonna make sense when you get to Weathertop, motherfucker. And you're like. What? You guys, he stabs him with the Morgul knife. Fourth movie, and you're like... <laughs> I guarantee you're never going to see that fucking knife again. <laughs> but I'm sitting there marking out, I'm like, the Morgul knife! It's just good. And shit, like, in the, even, I was even disappointed in the extended editions, we don't deal with the Barrow Whites. Because I've had this argument, you're like, I, with the, when they actually battled the Witch King in Return of the King, we're like, uh... I think, yeah, Mary stabs the Witch King, and the reason his blade harms the Witch King is because it comes from the barrows. It's a barrow knife. And so it's magic, and so it hurts him. And you're sitting there going, like, that has nothing to do with anything. And I'm like, no! <laughs> but I was like, I really would have liked to have seen it. You know, this is the kind of movie that would have included Tom Bombadil. And it wouldn't have been out of place. Yeah, that, that actually, yeah. Th that's the thing, is Tom Bombadil would... It, even in Lord of the the context of the War of the Ring is ridiculous. Because even when you're reading this book going, you're, you're, Hi ho the Dario, Tom Bombadillo! And you're like, the fuck is this guy? Because you're dealing with like these omens and portents and Sauron has the ring and he will conquer the world. Oh, and by the way, there's this dancing fruit fucker in the, in the woods. <laughs> and it comes and goes just as, just as easily. with Because I remember they're sitting around going like, well, wait, Tom's not affected by this ring. No, and that's... They're like, why don't you just give it to Tom? And he's just like, oh, I wish I could help you, but... Oh, look over there! Yeah. <laughs> that's actually a flaw I found in a lot of Tolkien's writing, is he, he sabotages himself at several turns. Like, Gandalf goes on at great length about how this ring is bad news. Nobody can touch this ring without being corrupted by it. If... It falls into the hands of the enemy. Anyone who gets corrupted by this, we're going to live under the reign of a new Lord of Darkness. And then immediately, 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 
We don't even leave the fucking Shire. And immediately we run into this motherfucker who's like, who's like, Bilbo, Frodo's like, yeah, I got this magic ring. And Tom's like, yeah, let me see that. Yeah, this is really cool. And Bill, uh, Frodo's like, don't put it on, it's like, evil. He's like, don't put it on, it's evil. He's like, whatever. And he hands it back. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> he's like, that sort of magic doesn't affect me. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm a nature god, basically. He's like, I'm not a, I don't give a shit. I'm a god. or so, He's like some kind of sprite. or I don't well, know. Well, why do we need Frodo to take it to the mountain? Why don't you take it, Tom? Yeah, Frodo's like, Frodo's like, you know, I'm just a hobbit. I don't know shit. I can't do this. Maybe you could do it. You chased off those barrel whites, man. And he's like, yeah, I could, I, I could, but um, I'm really busy. I I gotta go, and he just goes, and you're like, <laughs> and then and then later on when Faramir, in in the movies, Faramir captures them and is headed to Gondor, to turn the ring over. In the books, that doesn't happen, and it's ridiculous the way it doesn't happen. Where like, uh, Frodo, he's like, yeah, I've got this ring of power, and he's like, your brother tried to take it from me, and this is. Almost exactly what happens with Faramir is he's like, yeah, but I'm not my brother. I don't want this thing. If it were if it were lying on the side of the road and Minas Tirith were in flames, I would not take it. He doesn't, there's not even like a moment of temptation with this guy. He's just like, I, I don't want it. I would never want it. If I could save all of humanity, I would not take it. And I'm like, wow, thanks. Tolkien, like, I'm like, why, why the fuck would you do that? Like, you've established, you've hammered on this point. Boromir was corrupted. The entire fellowship is suddenly being corrupted. Gandalf wouldn't fucking touch this thing, and Faramir's like, fuck that, get away, get that fucking thing away from me. Like, why so many people bring up the, the Gandalf escaping by a giant falcon or whatever? Why doesn't he take him to Mordor? And it's just like... Uh, uh, well, it's I, kind of... Uh, I'm well, so tired of people bringing that up as a plot hole. Why don't they take the eagles to Mordor? I am so tired of that. It's... They're, they're, like, you can't just fly over the walls to Mordor. The, the walls are fucking watched. The Eye of Sauron would see them. And by the way, the Nazgul ride fucking fell beasts. It might, you might as well just, like, have a fucking strobe light... And then fly it over the walls. The Eye of Sauron's gonna see that fuck. You don't think he's gonna see the fucking One Ring of Power flying over the fucking wall? Fuck you but, guys. But still, it would have been nice to have one line of them going like. And I agree with you, but it still would just be like, you telling me there's not one person in the party like Mary or Pippin that's not going like, hey. But they don't establish. <laughs> they they never see the fucking eagles. Until like way later, I, in fact, I don't think the, I don't. Does the Fellowship ever see the Eagles? The, Gandalf deals with the Eagles. Gandalf yeah, deals when he's on Orthanc, but none of the other guys do. It's Gandalf's call, you know. And I think even the Eagles kind of want to be left out of it. I think at one point, if you read the books, I think the Eagles want to stay out of it because they're like they're like, look, we say like Gandalf, we got we're bros, right? No, we owe you one, but we, like we can't get involved with this. Possibly again, it's been a while. Something like that, but um, yeah, that is not a plot hole, guys. It's I'm, everyone brings that up. They're like, oh, this movie's bullshit. They could have just flown over the fucking crack of doom and dropped it off. I'm like, did you not see the Nazgul have dragons? And they know they're not dragons. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. But yeah, The Hobbit is the kind of movie that would throw Tom Bombadil in, and he wouldn't be out of place. No. You'd have this fruity fucker running around, singing songs and rhyming in the doors, and be like, right on, man. <laughs> and like, what, what song are you singing? And he's like, oh, we're doing a thing with the dairy. And they're like, they're like, oh, yeah, the song with the dairy and the thing. And they're like, yeah, because there's, there's, like, there's dance numbers in this movie. There's, there's, there's song and dance routines. There's musical numbers. There's musical numbers. And the, it's, it's fun. You know, it, if you let it go, and you're a fan, and you like... Because that's such a huge part. I've heard... I, in fact, I kind of miss that from the movies, and I just, I just got through bitching about it in Two Towers, but, like, music and song is a huge part of the Lord of the Rings series, and especially so in The Hobbit. So I was really glad to see that they didn't cut that. 
because there's a lot of songs written in The Hobbit. So, song and music are a huge part of it. And if you were if you were writing the screen, if you were adapting the screenplay, you'd see these songs are like, no fucking way, and you'd X those out. So I appreciated that. It's that kind of attention to detail and faithfulness to the source material that I liked. But it's gonna bore the shit out of anyone else. I I like the. I did like the, the more lighthearted. Yeah, it it didn't get too goofy, and and really, if you're sticking with the source material, it it it's not going to be too goofy. I mean, it, it there's there's all the scenes that that are memorable. Mm. The the riddle scene being the most yeah. memorable of yeah. them, which are just fun, and they're that that carries through the movie. It's just. I wish it were shorter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and what what I actually I, I thought it really well set up a lot of the the rivalries which are going to come to a head, like that al, the, the the Prometheus albino orc dude. I thought they built that up astonishingly well. You know, I I, I thought when when Thor and Oakenshield climbs down from that fucking tree, and he shows down with this guy, it's all very intense and slow mo and dramatic. You're like shit. Is real now. Like the the orc is like all limbering up. And he's like, mm, and Thorin is like, I'm gonna fuck you up. And I'm like, he's gonna fuck him up. And I'm like, I'm sitting there going like, he's gonna fuck each other up. And we're gonna be awesome. And it was awesome, you know. That scene where they're they're running through the goblin caves is awesome. Yes, I thought it was really good. It's a little cartoony, yeah. But the book is a little cartoony. You know, it's and I, I, swashbuckling. I think is a much better term, and, and I'm glad you came up with it because I wouldn't have. But it's fun. It's a fun movie with a slow first act. Once it gets rolling, once you once you get to the trolls, once you get to like the orc attack and stuff like that. As soon as you get to the mountain, then you're having some fun. That's why I needed to keep moving. Is it's it's it's. It's an adventure. You're, you're, you you want to go from the next set piece to the other because it's it's fun. It's yeah. fun. You're going. And that's why you wanted it to be more brisk. You wanted yeah. to go from cave troll to meeting but, the orcs and. But I appreciated <clears throat> the world building aspect of it. I yeah. liked I liked the tales of Erebor. I liked the story of the Heartstone. I liked hearing about Thorin's dad. I even liked hearing about Radagast. And I even love. I even loved in Rivendell that scene where they're eating dinner and they're showing all the magic swag. Basically, it's like a D and D game where they're like, "Yes, we found this magic shit." Yes, and he's like, "We need it identified, Lord Elrond." And <laughs> Elrond is like, "Identify," and he's like, "Oh, this is gut. This is a." Uh, uh, Glandring, the foe hammer, and he's like, "Yes, this is a magic plus two sword of greatness." <laughs> this is. And, this is. Goblin Slayer is yeah. plus five against goblins. Yeah, it's a plus, it's, it's, Ooh, it's, plus what, five. What is it? It's a, I forget what it is. It's like a Thorin Sword. It's like a Goblin Cleaver or something like yeah. that. And then Frodo's like, I wish I could get my sword identified. And then Gand, uh, Elrond grabs it and he's like, Oh, this is kick-ass touchdown fuck-up. And they're like, <laughs> it's a plus two short sword of swiftness. And Frodo's like, yes! And then all the other dwarves are like, hey, why do you get the fucking two-handed sword? Gandalf, you're a fucking wizard. He's like, I specialized. <laughs> I spent a fucking lot of proficiency slots in this son bitch. And I'm the wizard, it's mine. <laughs> you know? So I, I dug the shit out of it. I, and what, what was a really funny scene was I had issues with elves. And so I loved when they're like, Elrond is like, would you please come d have dinner with us? And so they're like, yeah, all right. And of course, they're all these salad-eating motherfuckers who've got like this huge salad bar. And of course, there's like five elvish bitches playing harps and really annoying flute music. And the dwarves are like, are you fucking serious with this shit? <laughs> and the other elves are like, you know, they're, they're, they're like, oh, bitter dregs. And they're playing their harps, and Elrond is like, mm, yeah, he's rocking out. And the, I'm sitting there going, like, I wish they would just fucking flip this table and go. And so, like, the John Belushi guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just bong, bong, bong. Sorry. So, yeah, I, I loved how they kind of, you know, uh, they, they made the elves look completely just assholes and useless and stuff like that, because I. I I have issues with elves myself in that they're these fucking stupid salad-eating bastards who are always like, let's play some harps and write poetry. So, but that's kind of Tolkien elves, right? You know, they're, they're the kind of douchebags who write all these 
you know, lyrical poems, and they always have to shoot bows. Because that, that, that was this huge thing where, like, I took heat for making a half-hobgoblin ranger, and they're like, why didn't you do an elf? And I'm like, oh, because all elves are rangers, right? Yeah, so... I'm going far afield. I did want to bring up that scene, though, because I laughed my ass off. Oh, very quickly, let's do trailers, because the trailers were worth talking about. <laughs> Number one! <laughs> Pacific Rim. Oh, that! Yeah! Oh, well, if you want to talk about No, 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 no. Pacific Rim, go ahead. <laughs> okay, it's uh, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. He's, it, he's directing fucking robot jocks. It's robot jocks. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I don't know why they call it Pacific Rim. How unhelpful of a title is that? Fucking robot jocks. <laughs> why would you call your robots versus... Mo your, your building tall robots against giant monsters movie Pacific Rim? What the fuck is wrong with you? Call it, like... This is where you need, like, a Snakes on a Plane style title. Robot jocks. You hear that title, you know what you're getting. You're going to see people joxing robots. You know, the, the Pacific Rim, the fuck does that mean? Mariana's Trench. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fucking Alpine Mountain. What? Like, I seriously expected, like, a nature documentary. Pacific Rim. I expected to have, like, some kind of fucking submarine talking about coral reefs. Pacific Rim. Fuck you. It's robot jocks. It's it's giant monsters versus giant robots. Giant robots, robots piloted. Yeah, by jocks. <laughs> There's these dudes in suits, like pilot. That's it. And I'm like, have that be the title. <laughs> this isn't hard. Pacific Rim. Fuck you. I got pissed off. I was like, you're like this movie looks awesome. I'm like, what? Yellowstone Forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking. <laughs> Central Park. <laughs> Cloverfield. <laughs> the fuck is Cloverfield? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> well, help me. <laughs> and then there's the M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yes. Oh my god, help me with this one. After Earth. <laughs> After Earth. This movie. What's a twist? <laughs> this movie looks... M. Night even needs twists in his trailers. He put a twist in his trailer. I didn't know it was supposed to. That's sad when he, he, like, he uncorks this big reveal. And I'm like, I, I'm sitting there like, was, was, that was that supposed to be a twist? Like, was I really supposed to think like this was some alien planet? Oh my god, he was hoping to surprise me with that. He's twisting us in the trailer. I did not know that, like, it It has, like, this big foreboding sound. <clears throat> like, he's like, do you know what planet this is? And I'm like, Earth. And then he goes, it's Earth. And then there's this big orchestra sting, like, Duh. bet you didn't know that shit. And I'm like, I, I, they were so, like, I know the trailer was so hoping for me to be like, what? What? No! No! Earth, no! You bastards! You blew it up! And I'm like, I'm like, what? Is that supposed to. The wind won! The wind! Ah! It's a, it's a spiritual thing. Actually, that, that would be. That would probably be. I, that's the twist! The wind destroys the earth and then remakes it in its image. Because, like, even Will Smith is like. Everything on this planet has evolved. Everything's evolved to kill humans. Everything has evolved to kill humans. That's what he says. So that makes sense. We'll, Ironically. We'll find the message cube from Mark, Mark yeah. Wahlberg. It was the bees. The bees, they came back. They were hiding, right? And then they came and killed us. And we were like, what? No. We're, we're peaceful. We, we oh. didn't mean to. Oh, black water, keep on rolling. Yeah. There's no gas out here, sir. There's no gas. And then there's gas. Man, we didn't steal your lemon drink. Yeah, it's what happens when you eye, you eye some woman's lemon drink. That's shit that happens. Oreo is getting really restless. But yeah, but there's this huge sting like, Oh, fuck. It's Earth. And I'm like, So? 
Like, I kept, I seriously was like, so is he going to round a bend and see the Statue of Liberty? Because, like, I, 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 I so, the first thing I thought was like, oh, this is Earth, because they're from space, and they, cra- it's Earth. <laughs> I brought this up to my, my other friends, because I saw the trailer before. Oh, did you? Okay. And I'm like... Did you know M. Night Shyamalan has a new movie? And they're like, did, fuck, did, no. Now, I don't remember this, because you told me when the trailer started. Did they even put his name up on the... No. They didn't. Okay, because I that was the funniest fucking part of Devil, with, which was the last movie he did. You're like watching this movie, you're watching this trailer, and you're like, this movie looks like a piece of shit. They're like, there's a devil in an elevator. This, what? This is fucking stupid. And then it goes, a film by M. Night Shyamalan. And the, the theater, no shit, burst laugh. into laugh. They're like, oh my god, no. And I was like, yeah, really. So I, I wasn't paying attention, but I was like, did this movie have a credit like a film by M. Night Shyamalan? No. No, it didn't. And okay. I, I, was, I, meant, I was like, M. Night Shyamalan is a new film, and they're like... No way. No, no about, way. We'd have heard about this shit, right? Who's giving him money? I'm like Will Smith. Because he's forcing his son down all of our throats. Okay, like, he's yeah. got to have all of his children represented in Hollywood. Yeah. So I'm, I bet you, like, Will Smith was going, here, you I'll gotta, give you millions, but you got to make my son an action star. you got to believe that if there was a studio behind this, they're like, we can't put your name. <laughs> we can't put it in the trailer. Can we still use Alan Smithy? Yeah, like because if I if I were running the studio, I'd be like, we can't have this. Like I wouldn't hire him in the first place. We're like, we can't have this dude's name on the trailer. We're gonna die. You saw what happened in Devil, right? They laughed. Holy shit! But Will Smith's like, nah, we like we need a Will Smith movie. He's insisting on like that. Mike Shyamalan's the only guy that will give this kid a chance. Oh my god. And then there's the Tom Cruise movie, which is about the exact same fucking thing. It is. It's like it's like sixty years ago, the Earth was wiped out, and I'm like, this is M- like, is this the prequel to M Night Shyamalan's movie? <laughs> but I'm sitting there going, like, this looks way better. It doesn't look it, like it does, still doesn't look like a very good movie, but it looks way better than fucking what was After Earth. So far, this movie is being built on one thing, and that's. Tom Cruise in a mech suit. Yeah. That's all I've heard, and, and really that should also be just be the title of it. Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise in a mech suit. suit. It looks it looks like it has a brain to it, at least. Like there actually is a twist going on here that isn't immediately telegraphed. Really, because like there's some hidden secret going on behind whatever, like a terraforming process or something like that. Like he's not doing what he, what we think he's doing. And they're like there's this woman who knows him, and I'm like, I legit don't know the twist here. And I care. Like, because there's some secret here, and I want to know. And it's not obvious, and I'm like, seriously, because with After Earth, there's no mystery here. What could there possibly be? Other than the fact that he's pulling a Planet of the Apes twist, which he gives away in the trailer. I so don't see anything that's going to blow my mind in this movie. Prepare yourself. It's going to suck. And Another twist is coming. And what's really bad is that the monsters in that movie that are shown in the trailer look so lame. They are so lame. It really is on the level of the werewolves in Twilight. Like, how bad they look. In fact, I almost... I think I saw the wolves in Twilight running around this thing because it looks really bad. And I'm not... I'm not saying that because it's Shyamalan. That's not helping. <laughs> but it looked like shit. It really... It's gonna be shit. But the funniest trailer was Beautiful Creatures. Is that the name of it? Well, you didn't see this trailer before. I have. This movie is a heinous Twilight ripoff. I'm amazed we haven't seen more of these, ironically. More of these Twilight ripoffs. This one is Twilight, but with witches. Where, like, you, she, and it's... It's It starts off immediately with a Bella Swan in the classroom. Yeah, she's awkward, and nobody understands her, and she looks wistfully out the window, and she's like, nobody understands me. I have these powers, and it alienates me from people. And if only I had someone I could talk to. And then, of course, this dark, mysterious guy comes in. Well, the only thing that's unique about this one is the, the roles are kind of reversed, where she's the... 
she's the magic one, she's and he's the, dangerous. He's the normal dude. The thing is, they're trying to have it both ways, where she's magic, but she's also normal. Where, like, she's all awkward, and she's got these powers, but she doesn't know how to cope. So, like, it's... It, like, you really want to... Where, like, she needs this dude to help her understand humanity. Because that, that's, that's her only hope, is this dude. But what's odd is, is uh, it's got... Blanking on the name, the guy. Yeah, uh, the guy. <laughs> oh, Jeremy Irons? Yes, Jeremy Irons. And he's... He's the most subdued actor in this film. <laughs> Everyone else. That's a good point. <laughs> when when Jeremy Irons is the most subdued actor in the film. Jeremy Irons, if you don't remember now, he is uh, Profion, the the evil wizard in Dungeons and Dragons the movie. And if you've seen the movie, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. We also need Bruce Payne. Like, like really, we need a reunion. Yeah, have Bruce Payne be the bad guy in this movie. Yeah, um... But we've got, we've got everyone doing these terrible southern accents. Yeah. Uh, I, I recognize Emmy Rossum is yeah. back, the girl from Phantom of the Opera. She's yeah. now back, but now she's this southern witch who's got all the evil power. You wonder, you wonder if that's also trying to kind of cash in on the True Blood crowd, because that's really, really deep south supernatural shit. Well, you think so? I, I have I've only seen like two episodes of True Blood, so oh, it's, that's more that's really more adult than yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah but seriously though if you're into vampires you've seen True Blood, you know like <laughs> this was this was punctuated by scenes of them just having goofy shit faces when they oh that scene I laughed my ass off at that one scene where they're sitting around a table and then like they're doing witch shit and like the room starts spinning or they're spinning around the room and they're like one of them's like the fuck is going on and Jeremy Irons is like oh and then they're like there's that evil witch going like ah! and I'm like ah! <laughs> It was really fucking funny. And it is such a blatant Twilight ripoff. It is, it's ridiculous. Like, they might have just, well, like, Twilight ripoff the movie, you know. Um, the one good thing I liked about it was the, the evil bitch who's the evil bitch witch, they, they have this effect when she's kind of uncoiling her evil powers, like when she's kind of going dark side on people and becoming like this evil witch. They have a really cool effect that I liked, where she kind of is surrounded by, like, these black veins and spidery webs, and her eyes glow red. Uh, I'm trying to think of where I've seen that kind of thing before. Uh, it's almost like, uh, if you've seen The Witcher, where, the, not The Witcher, the game The Witcher, where his eyes kind of glow when he does the, the cat potion we can see in the dark, it's that kind of really, it's this eye glow effect combined with this really interesting effect on her on her body that is black and shadowy that I dug that an effect <laughs> a, a visual effect I was like that's pretty cool but then they're like <laughs> like wow <laughs> now the last thing I want to say before we go is that every single trailer did this Boom! Boom! Every going deeper. Every goddamn one. Pacific Rim. Monsters are erupting from the water. Boom! And then a robot emerges from the waves. Boom! Idris Elba is saying badass shit. Yeah, Idris Elba's like. Yeah, Idris Elba's like. There's only one thing that can stop these monsters. Cut to black. Burr. Giant fucking robots. Then you see a robot. Burr. And then, like, you see a robot swinging a punch, and just before it hits, cut to black. Burr. You think I'm joking. Am I lying? No. Then you see... <clears throat> then you see uh, After Earth, the Shyamalan movie, where the... The spaceship they're in crashes, so, like, the back half of the spaceship gets ripped off. Will Smith gets sucked out the back. Then they cut to black. Brrr. Then he gives his, his monologue about this planet is out to kill you. Brrr. Yeah, this planet's out to kill you. Brrr. And then there's, Everything's like... Everything's evolved to kill humans. Brrr. 
And then there's like a giant piranha plant that's it opens up and it's like Arr! and then there's a stampede of like T Rexes and then there's Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise like he's hanging from a rope and all of a sudden the rope snaps and he disappears in a dire Right? And so, like, even the fucking Twilight thing, I can't remember. I, I, I wasn't, I was laughing my ass off too much earlier, but I'm almost certain, like, the witch is like, she will be one of us. <laughs> She's like, your time is counting down, my sweet, and the number, <laughs> right? It's like, you need to look deeper into your soul, embrace the deeper darkness. <laughs> I remember there was a shitty, like, there was a shitty pop song or something on there. It was it on the on, on the beautiful creatures. Yeah. It, it was just like embrace the light. So, You're gonna get that. It seriously. If you this would be beige to experience beige. The soundtracks for every single one of those Twilight movies. Is excruciating. It's it's this horrible. I don't even know what genre it is. It's this indie, like chick. It is uh, like I, I oh, like that song when when they go to the prom and they play. I, I all I remember is that it's like just nails in my sinuses. That song that they're like that's probably the catchiest song in the whole thing was they were playing baseball. And I'm like, this is still fucking terrible. It's like, it's it's terrible in that way. It's kind of like an earworm where you're like, oh my god, just end it, please. They're so bad. It, it, it's like that. It's it's it must be some it must be some kid thing. Like it must be some kind of like. It's not even it's not even pop music. I, I mean, I listen to top forty. What was that? Stuff is it? And it's just. Is it like Paramore who does that music? Like, yeah. That really shitty kind of like angsty chick breakup music. That, yeah. That's that's more like it. Because I'm guessing like, they must have like Googled shitty angsty chick music and like, oh, Paramore. Like, and Kelly Clarkson. Although Kelly Clarkson is way too high class for this shit. Yeah. So, like... <sighs> I don't know how you marry that with shitty pop music. <laughs> but, <sighs> yeah, it, it's, it's really funny how... They've done that. You know, how everyone's like, that Inception trailer was fucking awesome. It's the new thing. It's, People remember that. It's, it's... It's speed ramping. It's bullet time. You know, it's those things that are, like, really cool ideas. Well, that, there's even the... the When Lord of the Rings came out, the, yeah. the Two Towers theme, the... Da, 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 that, that So many of those trailers did the, that. The intense Hans Zimmer type stuff. Well, I think that is Hans Zimmer, the... You know... And so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's that really deep thrumming bar. Um, and even Prometheus did that. Oh, kind of. Where it was like, it does that really intense sound, like, over and over. Except that one was like, oh, oh. By the way, that was not in the movie. What the fuck was that? Like, it was just like this really discordant sound. Oh, oh, oh. And, uh, and I'm like, it, I, I, I was, I really thought... That was going to be something that was in the movie. Like, there was going to be a monster that, like, that was its fearsome shriek. <laughs> you know? Right? I thought it might have been, like, some kind of alarm in the alien spacecraft or whatever it was. I But, like, it's... It was it was cool in the trailer, but I was like, this is going to be... So, I thought it was a part of the movie. How could you not? Because it didn't sound musical at all. It sounded like a special effect. It sounded like a, a, a sound from a movie. A scary it was a scary sound effect I was like they gotta use this like I, about they got they're using this it's cool I like it you know um <laughs> the movie sucked balls but god damn what was the black goo uh, anyway. so yeah uh, I've kept miles up way too long he's got a trip in the morning and I've got work to do so um final verdict <sighs> it's too goddamn long um but I'm a huge d and d player Lord of the Rings shaped my life part you know it, it, it's a huge part of my life clearly you know i i eat this shit for breakfast and seconds for lunch um i loved every second of it <clears throat> but i can easily see oh can i easily see why it would piss anyone else off i can i really can 
Um, but it's this movie. Uh, honest, honestly, this movie is for me. You know, it, it, it's almost like they made this movie for Spoonie. You know, it's, and, and you you even liked it. You're like, yeah, it's, too, it's too goddamn long. You know, I, I still enjoyed it. I I prefer if we need like a cut version. I will be fair. Yeah, uh, even I will admit this is the extended version of the Hobbit. If 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 you were to cut a lot of those scenes we mentioned out, you wouldn't have missed them. Like you wouldn't have known. The Morgul Blade. Like, if you cut that whole shit with Radagast out, and they just went to Rivendell, like, if you just had them leave and they went there, like, after the trolls, they're in Rivendell. I'd have been like, and then, then Elrond reads the fucking thing, and is like, you have to go here, and they go, okay, and they leave. That's like... I'll even pay for the two versions. I'll pay for yeah. the regular, and I'll pay for for the, the, the my theatrical cut. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you easily could have cut that, and you wouldn't have known it was gone. If you hadn't read the books, it'd been like whatever, you know. But yeah, I was I was so happy to see it, but it didn't need to be there, you know. But I think that's I I really think that was the mission here with the Hobbit was to to make the Hobbit all of the Hobbit, all of it, and I think that's what they're going for. So mission accomplished. Uh, for better or worse, mission accomplished, and I think a lot of people are going to come down on the worst side. Uh, it, I just think in, in most audiences, and probably fairly enough, are going to get bored with it. Because that's a long time. Even the Lord of the Rings movies, which were much more action-packed, uh, and, and did not meander nearly as much as this one does, it was a lot to expect audiences to sit through. Because that was, what, two, two, uh, two, at least 2.15, probably 2.30, 2.45? Yeah. There were, there were numb asses coming out of that one. And those are, are probably more action-packed. Now, let's... The, the, the last, last word I'll say is, once you get past the first hour, this movie's, like, really action-packed and really awesome. Like, as soon as they kind of get to the mountains, where they got those big fucking stone giants, like, wrestling and RKOing each other on the landscape, you're like, y- y- even then you're like, what the fuck is this? It's awesome! And yeah, you're like, where the fuck? What? And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> and there's like, there's like one stone giant does a Shoraiuken on another one and punches his fucking head off. And you're like, does it have anything to do with anything? Nope. <laughs> it does not, sir. And you're like, are we gonna ever see this again? No. <laughs> why are we? Why are we watching this thing? Because it's cool. It's in the book. It's like, but it's it's po- yeah, like yeah, I know it's pointless. I love it. So yeah, that's pointless, but I love it. <laughs> I dug the shit out of it. Bye. <laughs>